All right, so I'm back in the garage. The epoxy has had a chance to cure. Unfortunately, I really don't like how the eyes have turned out. So I've set up a new tool path and I'm gonna to try to fix them. So the cut is done and the epoxy is dry. Let's see if round two is any better. So after a little bit of cleanup with the chisel, I think this version with the white looks way better than the version with the blue. So I'll continue on. All right, so with the eyes looking good, it's time to move on to the profile cut so we can get uh, the project cut out and ready for some sanding and finishing. And I just wanted to talk about uh, the program I use, and that is Inventables Easel. It works well for my workflow and how I want uh, to work. I'm able to use it on my iPad. I'm able to use it on my Mac and my PC um, without any real challenges going back and forth and I can make quick updates uh, if I need to change a cut. Uh, there are some times where, depending on the job, it can't, I'm just on the, the free version, so there are things that I can't get it to do without either getting the pro version or even um, some things that just easel doesn't do very well at all. So in this case, this job's been uh, quite simple and you can see all my different iterations in the bottom there. Uh, which I do like. I can duplicate a layer, I can make changes to it, um, set up a different tool path. Uh, so I do find that, again, for me and organizing it, Easel works well. Um, it's not for everybody though, for sure. That's why there's lots of good options in this world. So let's get ready to do that profile cut now. I'm sure some of you might have caught that in the video, uh, but as you can see while I was doing that profile cut, I accidentally cut into a couple of my work holding pieces. So I use these 3D printed uh, bench dogs, they're called, as index points, so that when I butt the stock up against them, it creates a good reference point. Um, and I didn't account for how close the bit was going to be to the edge of the project uh, or to the, to the work material and it obviously uh, cut into those, uh, those plastic pieces. So that is one of the reasons I use 3D printed um, work holding is that if a bit hits it, uh, it's not gonna wreck the bit. And if I do hit it with the bit, I can print new ones reasonably quickly and cheaply. So I'll get some new ones printed and uh, carry on. Uh, but yeah, just a good reminder, keep an eye on where your bit's gonna go relative to your work holding, not just your project stock. Uh, so I do have another profile cut I'm going to run. Uh, I ran the first one with a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to run it again uh, with an eighth inch end mill just to kind of clean up a little bit more. Uh, some of the um, outline has uh, some radiuses that the quarter inch end mill couldn't get to. Uh, so I'll clean that up with an eighth inch end mill. I just wanted to get the bulk of material uh, cleaned out using that uh, quarter inch end mill. So I'll get that bit changed and start the next cut. All right, so that uh, profile cut uh, with the eighth inch end mill went fine. Uh, it definitely removed a bit more meat in that little corner there. I'll take a little bit of sandpaper to it and uh, fix that up. All right, so I used my multi-tool to cut those tabs and free the workpiece. And now I'm just over at the router table uh, putting a chamfer on the underside and I'm going to put a small round over on the top side and then get it sanded up here. And after a few various sandings with uh, grits up to 400, 
now that it's all sanded and cleaned, I'm going to mix up some clear epoxy and get ready for the last pour of this project.